Okay, so good evening everyone. Good day everyone. So for today's topic, we'll discuss investment in associate. Okay, so investment in associate. So uh, this is covered by PASS 28. So when an entity or investor purchased a 20% to 50% of shares of another entity, the entity has significant influence over the financial and reporting policies of the investee or the associate. So if ever the investor uh, has 20% to 50% ownership uh, of the shares of another entity, it has obtained, the investor obtained a significant influence over the financial and operating policies of the investee or the associate. Okay, the investment is accounted as investment in associate. So, if you have 20 to 50% ownership, so the investment is called as investment in associate covered under PAS 28. Okay, what is significance influence? So, significance influence, it is the power to participate in the financial and operating policy decisions of the investee but not control, take note of this, not control or joint control over the policy. So when you say significant influence, you only have the power to participate in the financial and operating policy decision, but you don't have control, therefore you cannot decide, you cannot make decisions over the policies of the entity. So you only have significant influence, you only have the power to participate. Okay, you only have the power to participate, but you don't have the control. You don't have the power to make decisions. Okay, investment in associates, so it is accounted under PAS 28. It is accounted using the equity method of accounting. So, under uh, investment in associate is accounted using equity method. So, it is classified as non-current asset. So, it is presented in the Statement of financial position, your investment in associate is classified as non-current asset. Equity method also is only applicable for ordinary shares. So this investment in associate is uh, only refers to your invest uh, in your ordinary shares. Why? Because ordinary shares lang yung merong voting power. Okay, so uh, again, equity method is only applicable for ordinary shares. Okay, what's with equity method of accounting? Diba? So we account investment in associate using equity method. So equity method, so investment is initially recognized at cost. So therefore, investment in associate account is initially, the initial measurement is at cost. So therefore, uh, the, the starting amount or the initial measurement of our investment in associate is measured at cost. So uh, here, I will uh, provide you the basic formula. So this is the basic formula uh, in computing the carrying amount of the investment in associate at the end of the year. Okay, so you have initial measurement of the investment in associate, which is at cost, this is, or the acquisition cost. So that is the initial measurement. So if the company or if the, the uh, investor or the associate has profit for that certain period, then under uh, investment in associate, the return is you have share in profit. So your income account is based on the share in profit. Okay, so if there is a profit for the associate, so you, you will have a share. Okay, so to be computed by the profit of or net income of the associate multiplied by your equity interest. In equity interest, it is your ownership. How much percentage in ownership more? How much... Uh, the shares you purchase for that certain entity. So, ilan yung interest mo? That is equity interest. So, ito yung share nyo from the profit of the company. So, here, if there is loss, you also have share in the loss, di ba, of the associate. So, you have share in loss, same formula. You have net loss times the equity interest. Okay, so that's the duck. And, uh, using equity method, dividends received, Okay, dividends received or dividends declared by or dividends paid and declared uh, declared and paid by the uh, in associate. Okay, so we also have share of the uh, dividends declared and paid by the associate. So here, so dividends, dividends declared and or paid times the equity interest, that is your share in your dividend. So take note that it is deducted in computing the carrying amount of the investment in associate. Okay, here we have important note here, equity interest is not affected by share dividend. 
So therefore, it means that your equity interest, your equity interest, your, your number of shares or the percentage of your ownership will not be affected if you will receive a share dividend. So, the equity interest is the same before and after share dividend. So, take note of this that even you receive uh, shares through divid share dividends, diba? it will increase the number of shares. But the equity interest, the percentage of your equity interest will not change. Diba? So, it's the same before and after the share dividends. Okay, so also here under equity method, Cash and property dividend is not an income account. Take note of this. Under equity method, cash and property dividend is not an income account but a return or reduction of investment. Because under investment in associate, our income is the share in profit. So that is our income account. Here, the dividends declared and paid by the associate okay, is considered as uh, it's not an income account but it is a return or reduction of the investment. That's why the dividends received here, the, uh, our share for the dividends declared and paid by the, by the associate is deducted diba? in computing the investment account balance, which is the carrying amount of the investment in associate account. Okay, so if we try to look at the journal entry here, okay, this is the journal entry. Uh, at initial measurement, which is the acquisition cost, at the time of acquisition, the entry is with debit investment in associate, that's at cost, credit cash. Okay. Next is if uh, the associate has a net income, diba? so we receive a share based on our equity interest or based on our ownership. So share in profit, that's profit times equity interest percentage. So the entry is you debit investment in associate account and then we credit investment income. So this is our income account. So investment income account. Okay, next, uh, if the associate has incurred loss for the certain period, so we also have share for that loss. So to compute, you have the net loss times the equity interest on per, uh, percentage. Okay, that is debit loss on investment and credit in uh, investment in associates. So as you have noticed, if we have share in profit, our investment account uh, also increases. If we have share in loss, diba, our investment account decreases. So we credited the investment in associate account if there's a loss and if there's a profit, we debited the investment in associate account. Okay, so dividends are declared and paid. So dividends declared times the equity interest percentage. So here, ah, uh, this is wrong. Supposedly that this is not dividend income. This is uh, investment in associate account because, diba, according to the equity method, a uh, cash and property dividend is not an income account but a return or reduction of investment. Therefore, this should be investment in associate account. Okay, so you debit cash, if you receive cash, dividend, and if you receive property, dividend, that's non-cash asset, depending on what type of asset you receive, non-cash asset you receive. Then we credit the investment account since uh, cash dividend and property dividend is not an income account under equity method, but it's a deduction in your investment account. That's why we credit investment in associate account. That's the basic formula. Uh, under uh, in computing the carrying amount of the investment in associate account. But we also have uh, more complicated or maybe complicated formula. This is the comprehensive formula. So here, so this is the comprehensive formula. So we have this formula. Then we, we can use this in computing the uh, carrying amount of the investment in associate account. So this is... Okay, so comprehensive formula, that is starting point, this is the acquisition cost. Okay, this is the, in the uh, acquisition cost, you have fair value of the existing interest. So basically, this fair value of existing interest, ito yun, uh, fair value of existing interest is only applicable uh, in investment in associate achieved by stages. So I just incorporate all the, the items na pwedeng maka-affect in the computation of our investment in account in this comprehensive formula but we will discuss this later 
this uh, investment in associate achieved by stages. So for now, let's uh, focus our discussion here on acquisition cost, then plus the fair value of existing interest. So that is the total cost of investment, or this is the initial uh, initial measurement of our investment in associate account. Okay, so we have here uh, CA of net assets acquired that is carrying amount of the net net assets acquired. Okay, or the CANA. So we deduct this one to our total cost of investment. Then the uh, the balance should be the excess of cost over CANA. So there's an excess of our total cost of investment over the carrying amount of net assets acquired. So we acquired. Okay, so because by purchasing the sales, it's uh, just like we'll, uh, we, we are also purchasing the net assets of the uh, entity. So what is this carrying amount of net asset acquired? So how do we compute this one? So actually, CANA or carrying amount of uh, net asset, uh, carrying amount of net asset is equal to the carrying amount of your total assets minus the carrying amount of your total liability. So basically, that's assets minus liabilities. That is the carrying amount of net net assets. So after deducting the total liabilities from your asset. So that is how we compute uh, carrying amount of net asset acquired because uh, if ever the problem will not give you the, the amount, uh, the, the kana amount, so you need to compute. You need to get the carrying amount of your total assets, then deduct the carrying amount of your total liabilities. Okay, so after we deduct, we have here excess of cost over kana. So this is the excess of our total cost of investment over the a carrying amount that of the net asset that you have acquired from another entity. Okay, so here the excess of cost over kana pwede tong uh, maging attributable into uh, five items. So these are the excess of cost over kana is attributable to these four items. So you have first, you have undervalued depreciable asset or undervaluation of depreciable asset. Uh, this means that the fair value of your depreciable asset is uh, or the, the depreciable asset was reported lower was reported lower diba? compared to the fair value of the uh, depreciable asset. Okay, so that's why it's undervalued. Kulang yung value ng asset based on its fair value. Because here, we need to compare the fair value of the depreciable asset and the carrying amount. Because in this uh, formula, we only consider the carrying amount of the net assets. We're not considering the fair value of the asset. That's why uh, the excess could be attributable to undervaluation of depreciable asset. And pwede, pwede din dito, undervalued land. It could be attributed to undervalued land, so undervalued inventory or undervaluation of our inventory and goodwill. Okay, so how do we compute? Take note that uh, it, be careful. You really need to be uh, careful in uh, computing the value here because uh, we need to consider the equity interest, the percentage of your ownership. Okay, so for example, you have undervalued depreciable asset. This is undervalued asset, the total uh, difference between the fair value of the asset and the carrying amount reported times the equity interest because to get only the, your share only, diba? Your, your share from the undervaluation of the depreciable asset. Okay, so same with undervalued land, you only need to compute your share. So that's why undervalued land times equity interest. Also, uh, inventory, undervalued inventory times equity interest and the goodwill. Basically, goodwill is uh, residual. So, uh, if there's a, a remaining balance, pwede natin yung i-account under attribute to goodwill. Okay, so by the way, under this kana also, okay, this also based on our equity interest. So, that is total kana. Uh, carrying amount of net asset times your equity interest. Okay, because we don't own the whole company, diba? Because we only have 20 to 50% ownership from another entity. So that's why portion lang din yung account natin. Okay, so here, so if the excess of cost over kana, 
dito, if the excess of cost over kana, okay, so I think this, this should be negative. Okay. Okay. So, if the fair value, net fair value is greater than your cost here, so if mag-negative yung answer mo dito, it is called as excess of net fair value over cost. So, yung undervaluation, yung fair values ng mga depreciable asset land sa ka inventory is greater than your cost, greater than to their carrying amounts, respective carrying amounts. Okay, so here, so we need to uh, explain further itong mga items 1 to 5. So first item, you have undervalued depreciable asset. Okay, so Undervalued depreciable asset, it is amortized or depreciated over the remaining useful life of the depreciable asset. Okay, since undervalued yung depreciable asset natin, yung depreciation expense din natin uh, is under, uh, understated din. Because iba, kulang yung report na depreciable asset, undervalued sa So given also that the depreciation is also uh, under stated yung uh, depreciation natin. So, your uh, our undervalued depreciable asset is amortized or depreciated over the remaining useful life of the depreciable asset. Okay. So, to record the annual depreciation, so this is how to compute. You have undervalued depreciable asset. This is your share already. Can you, um, uh, the amount here. Okay. The amount here. That is the uh, undervalued depreciable asset divided by the remaining useful life. Okay. So, the entry for that is you debit investment income, then you credit investment in associate account. Again, because our uh, depreciation expense is understated, that's why uh, yung investment income or yung income account natin is overstated. So we need to correct. That's why uh, it's deducted. Your, your investment account is debited and also, the investment account is also credited or uh, deducted by the uh, annual depreciation of the undervalued uh, depreciable asset. Okay, so this is the entry. So, this is based on the annual depreciation of the undervalued depreciable asset divided by its remaining useful life. Second item that the excess of cost uh, to be attributed is you have undervalued land or the undervaluation or undervalued non-depreciable asset. And we know that a land is a non-depreciable asset. Okay, so if uh, the excess is attributable to undervalued land, so no amortization because again, land is not subject to depreciation or even amortization. And the amount is expensed when the land is sold. So take note of this that the land, if there is undervaluation attributable to the land, Okay, so the land uh, is the amount of the undervaluation from the land is expense when the land is sold. Therefore, if the land is not sold, is not yet sold, no need for us to prepare journal entry. Okay, no need for us to prepare journal entry. But when the time, if the time comes that the land will be sold, so this is the entry when the land is sold. Take note of this when the land is sold. Diba? So we only prepare entry. If the land is sold, okay, so if the land is not sold for uh, three years, four years, so we will not make an entry. Okay, so, but when the land is sold, this is the entry. We debit investment income, then we credit investment in associate. So here, uh, in investment in associate problems, it's very important that you know the journal entries because this might help you in answering the problems, in answering the questions. Okay, so here, so under valuation of land, we only prepare entry when the land is sold. So this is the entry when the land is sold. Debit investment income, credit investment in associate. Okay, so next you have number three that's attributable to under valuation of inventory. Okay, so this under valuation of inventory, amount is expensed when the inventory is already sold. So same concept with the land. We don't prepare journal entry, okay, not unless the inventory is sold. Diba? So amount is expense when the inventory is already, to, already sold. So if the inventory are already sold, the entry is you debit investment income, you credit investment in associate account. Okay, so debit investment income, 
credit investment in associate account. Okay, next is the goodwill. How do we account for the goodwill? So, if the excess of cost is attributable to our goodwill. Goodwill, so included in the carrying amount of the investment. So, goodwill is included in the carrying, carrying amount of the investment in associate account and not amortized because goodwill is not subject to amortization. However, the entire investment in associate, including the goodwill, is tested for impairment at the end of its reporting period. So, although the good uh, the goodwill is included in the carrying amount of the investment in associate, and it's not subject for amortization, but diba, every year we need to test the investment including the goodwill for impairment. So, if there's a uh, decrease in the values of the investment, that's impairment. Okay, so the number five item, we have excess of net fair value over cost. How do we account? if the undervaluations uh, will exceed our uh, cost, excess of cost over Kana. So, if what are we, uh, how do we account the excess of net fair value over cost? So, here, any excess of the net fair value of the associate's identifiable assets and liabilities over the cost of the investment is included as income. Therefore, included as income in the determination of the investor's share of the associate's profit or loss in the period in which the investment is acquired. Therefore, if there is an excess of net fair value over cost, it is accounted as or included as income in the determination of the investor's share of the associate's profit. That's why if there is an Excess of net fair value over cost, the journal entry is we debit investment in associate account and we credit investment income account. Again, included as income, that's why we credited investment income account here. Okay, if there is an excess of net fair value over cost. Okay, so if we try to prepare the T accounts for our investment in associate account and for the investment income account, so here, here are the items that would affect our investment in associate account based on the journal entries prepared uh, kanina. Okay, so here you have the initial measurement at cost because investment in associate is an asset account. The, the starting balance or the normal balance is debit. So if you have acquired initially an uh, investment, 20% to 50%, that's initial measurement at cost. Okay, so... Uh, the other items that's debited in the investment associate account, you also have fair value of existing shares. Again, this is, o this is only applicable for those investment in associate achieved in stages. We'll discuss that later. Then, if there's a share in profit, so we debit the investment in associate account. If there's an excess of net fair value over cost, diba, we debit the investment in associate account here diba? if there's an excess of net fair value we debited the investment in associate account so these are the items that will affect the investment in associate account on the credit side if there's a loss on the associates operation so we credited the investment in associate account also share in dividends cash and property dividends so we also Credited the investment in associate account. Again, it's a deduction on your investment account. So, if there's an undervalued depreciation of asset, take note depreciation, diba? Based on our entry, diba? To record the annual depreciation, diba? Affected yung investment in associate account natin. Nakakredit. That's why we need to credit if there's undervalued depreciation of asset. Okay, if there's undervalued land, take note when sold, diba? We only prepare entries under undervalued land when the land is sold. Therefore, if the land is not yet sold, no entry. So, it does not affect our investment in associate account. So, that's why I sp uh, specify here that undervalued land when sold. So, when the land is sold, the undervalued land is sold. So, investment in account, investment in associate account is credited. And next, if undervalued inventory when sold, diba, based on our entries here, we only prepare entry if uh, the inventories are sold. So, we credited investment in associate account. So, again, if you know the entry, you can really compute. Diba? You have uh, higher chances to compute the correct answer. So, that's undervalued inventory when sold. So, if we total the credits and the debits, debits and credits, so we have 
normally we have a debit balance of our investment associate account because the normal balance is debit is an asset account so this is how we compute the carrying amount of investment in associate for a certain period at the end of its reporting period okay so how about investment income account diba? so every year how much is the total investment income account or the investment income balance okay this is the t account of your investment income account so let's see what are the items that are debited and uh, debited and credited in this uh, t account of investment income account okay so on the debit uh, since uh, it's an income account the normal balance is credit so Every time we receive share from the profit of the associates, diba, we de credited the investment income account. So this is the example. If we receive share in profit, we credit the investment income account. Next item that uh, credited is if there's an excess of net fair value over cost. This one, diba, we prepare entry. This is our entry. So we credited investment income account. Okay. So that's the I that's the only two items under credit and uh, under debit side you have undervalued depreciation of asset diba? because as you have noticed the entry here undervalued of depreciable as or depreciation of undervalued asset that's debit investment income account that's why we debited the in the investment income account if there's undervaluation depreciation of undervalued depreciation of asset next is undervalued land when sold so again when sold we only prepare entries when the undervaluation of land or when the land is sold okay so based on our entry we debited the investment income account that's why we will debit the investment account here okay last item you have in uh, undervalued inventory take note that invent we only prepare entries if there's undervaluation from our inventories from the inventories of the associate uh, when it is already sold okay so our entry when the inventory is sold you have debit investment income you credit investment in associate account okay so here's the the T account of uh, investment income. So we total the debits and credits. So normally the investment income account will have a credit balance or investment income balance na naka credit. Okay, so, so let's apply the, the let's apply these formulas and these journal entries on our comprehensive illustration. So here is our illustration. So let's apply the uh, what you have discussed earlier. So again, so this is all about investment in associate. Okay, so at the beginning of 2019, so an investor purchase, so the investor purchase 40% of the ordinary shares. Take note, ordinary shares, again, because equity method is only applicable for ordinary shares. Okay, outstanding of an investee for 15 million when the net assets of the investee amounted to 30 million. Okay, take note of this. We acquire 40% of the outstanding ordinary shares of the investee or the associate. Therefore, since the, the ownership is uh, in between 20% to 50%, so we are already considered as, uh, the investment is already considered as investment in associate. So we already have significant influence. We have obtained significant influence already. Therefore, if there's significant influence, we'll use the equity method accounting. And the investment is accounted as investment in associate. Okay, so here the the 40% of the ordinary shares outstanding, the cost is 15 million. This is the acquisition cost. So we purchase it at 15 million when the net assets of the investee amounted to 30 million so this net asset this refers to the carrying amount of the net assets of the investee okay so let's continue at acquisition date the carrying amount of the identifiable assets and liabilities of the investee were equal to their fair value so uh, except for the following so the carrying amount of the identifiable assets and liabilities except for the following uh, are equal to their were equal to their fair value so except for these three items so here you have equipment so yung fair value ng equipment is 5 million greater than the carrying amount so take note that uh the 30 million we included the equipment there at carrying amount but the fair value of the 
uh, equipment is 5 million greater than the carrying amount. Therefore, the value of the equipment under Kana is undervalued by 5 million. So, kulang ng 5 million. So, dapat naka-fair value sa. Okay. Also, we have land whose fair value was 2 million greater than the carrying amount. So, yung fair value ng land is 2 million greater than the carrying amount which is included in your Kana, the 30 million. Okay, so inventory whose fair value was 2,500 greater than the carrying amount. So again, yung na-include na natin sa carrying amount, uh, sa kana natin uh, with regards to our inventory is uh, lower. So it should be, great, uh, it should be uh, greater than 2,500. Okay, that's why there are undervaluations. Okay, so if you try to use the formula, the comprehensive formula, you have the acquisition cost. which is the initial measurement of uh, our investment in associate account. You have acquisition cost. Okay. The existing, uh, the fair value of the existing shares is not applicable because it is not uh, an example of achieved by stages na investment in associate. Okay, so, ilan yung, magkano yung acquisition cost natin? That's 15 million. We acquired as 40% shares at 15 million. Therefore, this is 15 million. Okay, next sa formula natin, you have your Kana. Diba? Your Kana is 30 million. But take note, you only own 40% of that Kana. So, that's why we need to multiply. That's 30 million times... 40% because this is only your ownership, diba? So, hindi mo own yung lahat. Okay, so, that's 30 million times 40%. Magkano yan? 30 million times 40%. Okay, that is... Peso na lang natin to para. Okay, that is 12 million. Therefore, 15 million acquisition cost minus your Kana 12 million, you have excess of cost over Kana. Diba? Subra yung cost natin sa Kana natin. So, that is 3 million. You have excess of 3 million. Okay, 3 million. Pat nakadidak to. Then, that's 15 million minus 12 million. So, the excess of cost over Kana is 3 million. Okay. Again, uh, this 3 million, kanino to attributable? Diba? Kanino natin to i-allocate? Okay. So, this 3 million na excess of cost over Kana will be attributed to these 3 items. Diba? We have 3 undervalued items. You have the equipment. This is depreciable asset. It's an equipment account. You have the land, that's non-depreciable asset, and you have the inventory. Okay, so first, that's uh, attributable to our equipment. So, undervalued depreciable asset, or undervalued equipment na lang gamitin natin. And this is a depreciable asset. So, be careful that the undervaluation total is 5 million. Take note that you only own 40% of the net assets of the associate. So, therefore, uh, you need to get your share from this 5 million undervaluation. So, that's 5 million times 40%. So, your share from that uh, undervalued depreciable asset is uh, 5 million times 40%. Uh, that's equal to 2 million. So, my 2 million na tayo. Dapat this is negative, minus. Okay. Next, attributable to your undervalued land. Okay. Magkano yung undervaluation ng land mo? So, again, you only own 40%. So, that's kuning lang natin yung share mo sa 2 million times 40%. Okay, that's 2 million 
times 0.40. Okay, that's 800,000. That is the undervalued, your share from the undervalued land. Next item, you have undervalued inventories. So, undervalued inventories. Okay, that is, again, you only get your share from the 2.5M, your 40% share. So, that is equal to 2,500,000. Times 0.40. That's 1 million. Okay, so if you try to compute this one, okay, that's 3 million minus the 2 million minus the 800,000. Okay, you have excess. Anong tawag dito? Excess of net fair value. over your cost. Why? Because kung titingnan natin, nag-negative. Mas malaki yung undervaluation, yung fair values ng tatlong items natin compared to the cost. Yung excess of cost over kana natin. Therefore, excess, yung, sub, yung sobra is excess of the net fair values of the three items over your cost. So, therefore, this is excess net fair value over cost so we have excess of net fair value over cost so now how do we account these items okay how do we account these items so before we will uh, proceed on how to account these items let's read first the uh, succeeding information so you have the equipment has a remaining useful life of four years therefore the equipment has a remaining life of four years the land was sold on 2020. Take note, when is the acquisition date? You acquire the uh, shares, 40% of the ordinary shares outstanding at the beginning of 2019. But the land was sold on 2020 pa. So, 2020 pa na sold si land. So, here, next is 50% of the inventory was sold during 2019 and the remaining 50% was sold on 2020. Therefore, the Invent undervalued inventories, half of it was sold uh, on 2019 and half of, the, uh, half of the, uh, the remaining balance of 50% was sold on 2020. Okay, so here, uh, it, it's better to prepare the journal entries so that we can really trace the transactions. Okay, so 2019, these are the entries on 2019. So first, you need to record at the date of acquisition. So you reg you purchase uh, shares that's investment 40 percent investment in associate that's on acquisition date or the initial measurement you credit cash okay so the amount here is 15 million that's 15 million then you have a credit of cash 15 million Okay, next entry here, uh, by the way, after, after those information, the investee reported net, uh, net income and dividends declared and paid for the following year. So you have 2019 and 2020 net income and dividend of the associate. Okay, so 2019, okay, let's record first our share in the net income. That's 10 million times 40 percent don't forget your equity interest your own your share only that's for 10 million times 40 percent okay that's 10 million times 40 percent okay that is okay 4 million okay you have share in uh, profit for million. So the entry, if you have share in profit, that's investment, uh, that's debit cash. No, that's investment in associate. And credit investment income. 
that is 4 million. Okay, that is our entry share from the profit. Okay, next is our share for 2019 for the dividends declared and paid. So you have 5 million, our, uh, the associate uh, declared the div and paid dividend worth 5 million. Okay, so since uh, we only have 40% interest, so kunin lang natin yung 40% share natin from the dividends. Okay, so the entry for the dividends is, the dividends is considered as deduction from your investment account. So you receive a cash dividend, then you credit investment in associate account. In associate. Okay, the amount is, that is 5 million times your 40% share. That's 2 million. Okay, that's credit 2 million. What's the next entries for 2019? So again, we need to consider the undervaluations. Okay, so undervaluation first, you have attributable to the depreciable asset equipment. Take note at the, if there's undervaluation of depreciable asset, we need to get the uh, annual depreciation. Okay, so from the amount that we have, uh, at, uh, the amount that we have recorded or attributed to the undervalued equipment. Okay, that's 2 million. So, how much is the remaining useful life of the undervalued uh, equipment? So, it says here that the useful life, the remaining useful life is 4 years. So, we need to divide the 2 million, divide 4 years. So, this is the annual depreciation of the undervalued equipment. So, how are we going to account the 500,000? Okay, so... Entries for this, diba, as, as illustrated a while ago, so you have debit, investment, income, then you credit investment in associate account. Okay, so that is 500,000. Take note that this is the depreciation. So, you need to divide it from the useful life. The body is subject to amortization. So, that's 500,000 Okay, that's 500,000 Next, undervalued land. Do we need to prepare entries for 2019 for the undervalued land? Okay, based on the information, the land was sold on 2020 and we are preparing the journal entries for 2019. And we only prepare the land is only expense when it is sold. So therefore, on 2019, no entry for the undervalued land. So no entry because hindi pa nabenta yung land. Okay, because it was sold on 2020, not on 2019. Okay, no entry for the land. Next, undervalued inventory. So, we have undervalued inventory. Okay, so again, same with the concept of land. We only prepare journal entries for the undervaluation of inventory when the inventories are already sold. So, based on the given information, 50% of the inventory was sold on 2019. And the remaining balance of 50% was sold on 2020. So, again, we need to have an entry for the 50%. Nanabenta during 2019. So here you have 50% of 1 million. Okay, that's 500,000. Okay, that's 500,000. How do we uh, pre journalize the transaction uh, regarding undervaluation of inventory? Okay, so since there are inventories na nabenta, there were inventories sold. So our entry is investment income. Credit, investment in associate account. Okay, so the amount is 500,000. So again, no entry for the land because the land was sold on 2020. Okay, meron pa bang entries uh, uh, we need to prepare for 2019? We have already accounted the initial measurement, the acquisition cost. Ito na. 
we have already accounted the share in our net income, share in profit. We also accounted the dividends, share in dividends. The depreciable asset, the depreciation of the undervalued depreciable asset. Then no entry for the undervalued land and for the undervalued inventory because 50% uh, were sold during 2019. So we have entries here. Okay, so meron pa bang entry? Okay, yes, meron pa. The excess of net fair value over cost. Diba? Based on the illustration a while ago, if there are excess of uh, net fair value over cost, we have an entry. So the entry here is we debit investment in associate, then we credit the investment income account because the excess of net fair value is included in the income under the share, share of the profit of the investor. So that's investment in investment income. Okay. Therefore, how much is the investment income? That is 800,000. Okay, so I guess th these are the entries for 2019. So this time, let's prepare the entries for 2020. For 2020, since uh, wala nang acquisition because initial lang yung acquisition. Okay, so 2020, let's start with the share in net income because on 2020, the associate has net income of 20 million. Therefore, our share is only 40%. So, the 40% of 20 million, so our entry is investment in associate. The amount is 20 million times 40%. That is... Okay, you have 8 million share from the profit for 2020. Then credit investment income account. Yung share ng profit natin. That's 8 million. Okay, next, you have share from the dividends declared and paid by the associate. So you have 10 million dividends. Our share is only 40%. So that is debit. It's a deduction to our investment account. Debit cash. Credit. Investment in associate. That is 10 million times 40%. That's 4 million. Next, what's the next entry? Okay, the next entry is the undervalued depreciable asset depreciation. Because this is annual, 500,000 every year. Okay up to the remaining life of 4 years. So again, we need to prepare the entries again for the 500,000. So that is debit investment uh, income that is 500,000 credit to investment in associate account. Okay, this the uh, undervalued depreciation of the equipment investment in associate associate so that is 500,000 next we have uh, how about the undervalued land because the, but the land was sold on 2020 so this time we, we prepare entries for the undervalued land because the land of 2020 was already sold. Okay, so the entry is, okay, same entry, that's investment income, investment income, credit investment in associate. So take note again, we only prepare entries for undervalued land when it is sold. Okay, so that's investment in associate. That is how much? That's 800,000. Diba? 800,000. Okay. 
Next is you have undervaluation of inventory. Do we need to prepare for the inventories? Undervalued inventories? The answer is yes because the remaining 50% was sold on 2020, were sold on 2020. So therefore, since uh, there are items, there are inventories that were sold in 2020, we need to prepare entries for the items or the inventory sold. Investment, same entry, investment income, credit investment in associate. Aso, shape. Okay. How much? So the 50% is 500,000. That is 500,000. Okay, meron po bang nakalimutan? I guess these are the entries for 2020. So we are done with the transactions. We are done recording the transactions from 2019 and 2020. So this time, let's compute the carrying amount of the investment in associate in 2019 and 2020 at the same time how much is the investment income for 2019 and 2020 okay so let's start first let's copy the this one okay so do we have initial Measurement at cost. Yes, meron. Diba ito? Yung 2019. That's 15 mil uh, million debit investment in associate. Next, you have fair value of existing shares. No, this is not applicable for this problem because this is only applicable for those investment in associate achieved by stages. Do we have share in profit for 2019? Yes, we have. We debited the investment in associate account. So that's 4 million. Next, do we have excess of net fair value over cost? Meron ba? Yes. Diba? We have entries here. Diba? We have 800,000. We have entry uh, investment in associate debited here. 800,000. This refers to the excess of net fair value over cost. So that is equal to for 2019. That's 800,000 debit investment in associate. So, since there's a net income, wala na itong loss. Hindi pwede magkasabay yung net, in net, net income saka yung net loss. Share in dividends for 2019, meron ba? Yes, we have. How much? So, tingnan natin. Nakakredit yung investment in account. Okay. Ito, di ba? Cash, you receive cash. This is the dividend. That's 2 million. Undervalued depreciation of asset or depre undervalued depreciation of depreciable asset meron ba on 2019 yes we have we have this one 500,000 we credited the investment in associate account that's credit 500,000 how about undervalued land when sold on 2019 meron ba wala because the land was sold on 2020 so that's zero wala tayong value dyan how about undervalued inventory when sold? Meron ba? Yes, we have this one, 500,000. We have credited investment in associate account. So that is equal to 500,000. Okay, this is for 2019. So we need to compute the uh, carrying amount of the investment in associate account in 2019 for the uh, year-ended 2019. So we have total, magkano yung total... Uh, Debits natin, that's plus. Okay, you have 19,800,000. Your total, ang total credits natin, we have 3 million. Okay, we have 3 million total credits. Therefore, we have the ending balance of or the carrying amount of our investment in associate account is... 19,800,000 minus the 3 million. So the balance is 16,800,000. Uh, 16, this is for the year 2019. Okay, let's continue. How about 2020? So into 2020, this is now the beginning balance of your investment in associate account. Because again, it's a real account. It's an asset account. The ending balance will be forwarded in the next accounting period and will be the beginning balance of the account. 
So this is the beginning balance for 2020. Okay, so let's check. Uh, ano yung meron transactions that affect our investment in associate account for the 2020 journal entries. Okay, so ito yon 2020 natin. Okay, so here, okay, this 8 million. Saan galing tong 8 million debit investment in associate account? Okay, that refers to the share from profit, diba? That share from our profit, share in profit. Just continue, that's how much? That's 8 million debit investment in associate account. Okay, next, if we try to look at in our journal entries, okay, next transaction, di ba, nakakredit yung investment in, account, investment in associate account natin. Anong transaction to? This is the share from the dividends, di ba, share in dividends. That's credit. How much? That is 4 million credit investment in associate. So, let's just put here. Okay. Next transaction in 2020, you have credit investment in associate account. Okay. Saan ang galing to? This uh, refers to the undervalued depreciation of a depreciable asset 500,000. So that is undervalued depreciation. Copy natin to. That's 500,000 since uh, depreciation sa equal yung uh, annual amortization niya or your depreciation niya. Next, based on our entries on 2020, you have credit again, investment in associate account. This refers to the undervalued land, di ba? Because on 2020, the land was sold, then we need to prepare the entry because the land was already sold. So this is undervalued from undervalued land when sold, again, when sold, that is credit to investment in associate, that's 800,000. Okay, next you have uh, we have uh, investment in associate credit. Okay, this transaction refers to the undervalued inventory, the remaining 50%. Okay, so that is undervalued inventory when sold because 50% were sold on 2020. In 2020, okay, the amount is 500,000. Ayan. So, I guess wala nang uh, entries here, transactions here that affects our investment in associate accounts. I think we, we have accounted all already the investment in associate accounts. Okay. So, yung debit natin is only the share in profit. But we have the beginning balance of 16,800,000. Therefore, let's compute magkano yung carrying amount ng investment in associate natin uh, on 2020. Okay. So your total debits, our total debits, you have beginning balance 16 million 800 for uh, 2020, that's the ending balance of 2019, plus the share in profit, you have total debits of 24 million 800,000. Then total credits for 2020, you have 5 million 800,000. Therefore, we have uh, the carrying amount of the investment on December 31, 2020 is equal to 19 million. So this is the carrying amount of the investment in associate for the year ended December 31, 2020. That is 19 million. Okay, so if the question is how much is the carrying amount or what is the carrying amount of the investment in associate on December 31, 2019, the answer is 16,800,000. But if the question is how much is the uh, carrying amount of the investment in associate on 2020, the answer is uh, 19 million. Okay, so we are done with the investment in associate account. Let's proceed with the T account of our investment income account. So let's copy the formula here, the T account. Then let's 
compute for the balance or the total investment income for certain period, the 2019 and 2020. Okay. Here, so investment income. Okay. Investment income account, so normal balance credit. So do we have share in profit for 2019? First, we compute for 2019. So here, that's investment income. 2019. Okay, do we have share in profit for 2019? Yes, meron, di ba? Ito, investment income, credit, 4 million. Naka-credit yung investment income. So that refers to our share in profit. So that's credit, 4 million. Next transaction, do we have excess of net fair value over cost? Okay. I think we have, di ba? 2019. Di ba? Ito yung last entry natin. 800,000 excess of net fair value over cost. Our entry, we have credited investment income account. So, that's equal to 800,000. Okay. So, how about the debit side? So, do we have undervaluation or depreciation from our undervalued depreciable asset? So that's debit. Okay, so let's check if naka-debit ba talaga yung account. So let's check. Investment income debit. Okay, this one, investment income debit, 500,000. This refers to the depreciation of the undervalued depreciable asset. So tama naka-debit. So equal to the depreciation na... So, 500,000 debit investment income. How about undervalued land when sold? Do we have entry regarding undervalued land on 2019? No entry because the land is not yet sold. So, therefore, wala. Wala tayong debited na investment income account. So, that's zero or wala none. Then, undervalued inventory when sold. So, meron bang nabenta on 2019? Yes, meron. So, the entry is ito, investment income. We debited investment income from the inventory sold in 2019. The 50% inventories were sold. Okay, so that is 500,000 also. So, that's debit investment income. Okay, we are done with our T account for investment income for 2019. So, here we have total debits of 1 million. Then we have total credits of 4,800,000. Therefore, we have a net balance, credit balance for our investment income account of 3,800,000. That is for 2019. So the investment income for 2019 is 3,800,000. This time, we need to compute 2020. Take note that investment income account is a, a nominal or Temporary accounts. Therefore, that 3,800,000 will not be carried forward in the next accounting period. But this is the balance. Again, this is a nominal account. It will be closed at the end of the reporting period. Close to the uh, equity account. Okay, so therefore, we need to make another T account for 2020. So again, hindi mapo-forward yung balance ng investment income account because again, it's a nominal account, temporary account. It will be closed at the end of the reporting period. Close natin sa equity account natin or capital account natin. Okay, so let's make another T account for 2020. So, okay, so share in profit. May profit ba tayo share sa 2020? Yes, meron. That's credit 8 million. Okay, so that's Share in profit, 8 million. Excess of net fair value over cost for 2020, wala. Wala tayong entry, di ba? Okay, so that's zero. So no amount yan. How about meron bang undervalued depreciation from the depreciable asset? Yes, meron, di ba? Ito. Uh, this one, di ba? Debit investment income, 500,000. So that's 500,000. Next, meron bang undervaluation from land? Yes, meron, di ba? Because yung land was sold on 2020. So, the entry, try to check our entry here. This one, investment income, 800,000 debit. So, post lang natin yung entries natin sa ledger ng investment income account or T account. Undervalued inventory when sold. So, here we have entry here, debit investment income. So, post lang natin. Okay, 500,000. 
think that's all for uh investment income for 2020 so total you have 1 million 800 debits you have total 8 million credits therefore the investment income for 2020 is 6 million 200 thousand so if the question is how much is the investment income for 2019, the answer is 3,800,000. If the question is how much is the investment income on 2020, the answer is 6,200,000. So if the question is how much is the uh, investment in associate account for 2020, the answer is 19 million. How much is the investment account in 20, 2019, the answer is 16,800,000. Okay, so basically, yun lang yung mga questions sinatanong sa problems uh, regarding this type of, uh, uh, this topic. Okay, so uh, I think that's all for the uh, investment in associate account. So uh, we will have a part to discussion for the, uh, no, by the way, we, ha we have uh, another topics here we need to discuss here. Okay, this one. So, for this topic, so you have investi with heavy losses. Ano yung ibig sabihin nito? Okay, so here, past 28, paragraph 38, if an investor's share of losses of an associate equals or exceeds the carrying amount of an investment, the investor discontinues recognizing its share of further losses, the investment is reported at nil or zero value. Ano yung ibig sabihin nito? If ever yung uh, associate natin, uh, has losses, incurred losses for several years. Then, syempre, we have share from the losses. Then, from time to time, yung losses, yung, yung investment account natin, bumababa because of the losses. Okay, so, if ever yung share natin sa losses exceeds the carrying amount of our investment in associate accounts, investment in associate accounts, so, we need to, as the investor, discontinue recognizing losses. And we need to present or recognize or reported the investment in associate account at zero or nil. Okay, this is the illustration. Okay, so on January 1, 2019, the investor acquired 25%. So, merong significant influence because 25% of their ordinary shares of associate for 5 million. So, 5 million is our acquisition cost. So, that's debit based on the account natin. Lagay natin 5 million. That's the initial measurement. Then, uh, the profit and losses made by the associate over fi uh, first 5 years of operations were. So, on year 1, on year 1, my losses na, my loss na 1 million. So, magkano yung share natin? 25% yung ownership natin. So here uh, on year 1 so we have a share of 250,000 Okay that's 250,000 Okay let's Okay 250,000 So on 2019 the balance of our investment in associate account We have debit balance of 5 million minus 250. We have 4,750 balance. This is 2019. This is the balance of our investment in associate account. So this will be the beginning balance on 2020. But on 2020, another loss. Diba? So 10 million loss. Our share as the investor, 25%. That's 2,500,000. So our share from the loss is 2,500,000. Okay, that's 2,500,000. Para uniform na lang, peso na lang natin. Okay. So, on 2020, the balance of our investment in associate account is 4,750 minus the 2,500,000. So, meron na lang tayong 2,250. Okay, on year 3, on 2021, loss pa din si associate. So, you have 12 million, our share is 3 million. So, take note that if we record here 3 million, 
sobra negative na yung invested in associate account natin, di ba? So that's 2250 minus 3 million, that's 750 negative. So according to the standard past 28 paragraph 33, if the investor share of losses of an associate equals or exceed the carrying amount of the investment, discontinue natin yung pagrecognize ng loss. Then the investment is reported at nil or zero value. Therefore, we only recognize here kung anong kaya lang i-absorb ng investment natin account. So since the balance is 2 to 50 but our share is 3 million, we only recognize 2 million 250. Because again, di ba, hindi dapat mag-exceed. If the, the share of loss will exceed the carrying amount of our investment, we record the investment at nil or zero. So on 2021, The question, how much is the balance of the investment in associate account? The answer is zero. Diba? Zero. Okay, wala. Walang balance. But take note, diba? 3 million dapat yung loss na i-absorb natin. But because our investment hindi na yung kayang i-absorb, 2 to 50 lang yung na-absorb. So, meron pa dapat, okay, 3 million minus So, meron pa tayong kailangang i-absorb na 750 loss from 2021. Okay, good thing on 2020-2022, nagka-profit na tayo 2 million. So, our share is 500. So, since we have loss of 750 na hindi pa na-absorb uh, last 2021, say 750 loss, our share 500,000 income, di ba, kulang pa din. So, we need to deduct the 500,000. So, ngayon, magkano na lang yung kulang na loss na hindi pa natin na-absorb? So, that is 250,000. So, on 2022, wala pa din. Zero pa din yung balance ng investment in associate account natin. Because we still have 250,000 loss to absorb. Okay, ganito yung application. Okay. On 2023, my profit na 2,500,000, our share is 625,000. So this time, kaya na nating i-absorb lahat ng balance ng loss na 250,000. So mayroon tayong 625 na share sa profit. Question ngayon, magkano na lang yung excess ng profit natin? So sobra, diba? 250 lang yung i-absorb natin na loss, but we have a profit of 625. Yung difference is 625 minus 250. Okay, meron pa tayong share sa profit na 375,000. So on 2023, meron tayong share sa profit na 375,000. 375,000. So, the balance of our investment in associate account for 2023 is 375,000. So, 2023, that's 3. This one, 75,000. So, again, if the question is how much is the investment in associate balance for 2019, the answer is 4,750. How much is the carrying amount of the investment in associate account on 2020? That's 2,250,000. How much is the investment in associate balance or the carrying amount of investment in associate on 2021? Zero. Carrying amount of investment in associate on 2022? Zero. Carrying amount of the investment in associate on 2023? We have 375,000. We try to make a journal entry. So here, mayroon tayong entry. My loss na 250. My loss na 25. My loss na 2250. Here, no entry. No entry, but on 2023, we recognize gain, 375,000. Okay, this is the application of investee with heavy losses. Okay, so, okay, so next, we still have a few topics to discuss. We have impairment loss. Okay, if there's indication that an investment in associate may be impaired, so according to PAS 28, PAS 40, it requires that an impairment loss shall be recognized whenever the carrying amount of the investment in associate exceeds the recoverable amount. So there is impairment loss if the carrying amount of the investment in associate is greater than the recoverable amount of the investment in associate account. So again, merong impairment loss if the carrying amount is greater than the recoverable, recoverable amount of the investment in associate account. Okay, how to compute the recoverable amount of the investment in associate? 
So recoverable amount is computed higher higher between the fair value less cost of disposal and value in use. Okay, again, higher between the fair value less cost of disposal and value in use. That is how we compute the recoverable amount. Another topic, you have investment with preference shares. Because uh, in accounting, if uh, the associate or the corporation has ordinary and preference shares, diba? before to, be, before the ordinary shareholder will receive its share from the dividends, we need to deduct first the share of the preference shareholders. Diba? That's why gitawa, tinawag sang preference shares because diba, they have they, uh, they, they, they will receive first dividends before it distribute yung dividends to the ordinary shareholders. So here, we need to identify if the preference share is nakakumulative and non-cumulative. Okay, so if the preference is cumulative, so this is how we compute the net income, diba? we need to deduct first the preference dividends before we compute our share from the net income. Because again, investment in associate is applicable for ordinary shares. But what if merong cumulative preference shares, si corporation, si associate? So first, bigyan muna yung preference shareholders before i-distribute kang ordinary shareholders yung dividends. Okay. So this is the net income how we compute the amount para for the share in profit that's net income minus the preference dividends. Okay, under cumulative preference share, okay, the preference dividends is deducted whether or not such dividends are declared. So regardless kung declared or not, okay, declared or not, the preference dividend is deducted if the preference share is nakakumulative if cumulative sa so again regardless if cumulative preference share we need to deduct the preference dividends regardless declared or not but the second type of preference is we have non cumulative preferences non cumulative preferences so under non cumulative to compute the net income subject for sharing okay you have net income minus the preference dividend but take note that we only deduct the preference dividends it is only deducted when dividends are declared. So take note that if non-cumulative preference here, we deduct the preference dividend if the dividends are declared, only declared. So if hindi na declared, then disregard the preference dividends if non-cumulative. So the net income is the income subject for sharing. Okay, so I guess that's all for this uh, topic, investment in associate. For the next part, okay, we'll discuss... Uh, some problems also regarding investment in associate. So I hope you have learned something for this discussion. So thank you for listening.